Hello everyone. Today we are going to make an X-ray effect, just like what we see in the level, through the wall to see the character behind or any static mesh. Of course we can also use it in some skills like scanning the scene. First we need a mesh to show this effect. Here use the character in Mixamo, then add a wall to it. Okay now we can't see the character behind. To achieve X-ray we need to add a post-process volume. Use the post-process material too. Let's enable infinite extent so that the entire level is affected by the post-process volume, and add the post-process material in the rendering features. OK, so the post-process volume is set up. Before creating the material we must remember to enable custom stencil in the project settings. Select enabled with stencil. Now let's make the material. Change the material domain to post-process. Then search for the scene texture. Select the custom stencil. Mask its color. Only the R channel is needed. Then add lerp. Alpha is the output value in the custom stencil. Inputer uses the post process input zero. This is the original color in the scene. Mask R, G, B channels. And input B is the mesh with custom stencil. That is, the color that needs X-ray, which is set by customize. Such as blue. OK. Now let's go back to the level and apply this material to the post-process volume. Select the character in the level, search for custom depth here, and enable it. OK, it still looks like there is no changes. This is because the custom stencil value of the character is zero. In the material, if alpha is zero, the output is the original color of the scene. If it is a value greater than zero, such as one, two, three, the output is the color we set. Yes, now it work, a very simple X-ray effect. But we will find that if the camera moves behind the wall, there is no occlusion, the character will still apply the X-ray color. This is because we didn't compare the scene depth and custom depth. We need to make sure the custom depth greater than the scene depth. When there is a wall or other mesh occlusion, X-ray will be applied. Okay. Now we go back to the post-process material and add another lerp. Also add custom depth and scene depth. It is still the masker channel. Use the output value of a single channel to output the distance between the current pixel and the camera. Then use the custom depth to subtract the scene depth. If the output value is greater than zero, it proves that there are other meshes blocking the character with custom depth enabled. At this time, we need to use the color of X-ray. Finally, use saturate to clamp the output value between zero and one, so that the color will not be too strong. If the scene depth is less than or equal to the custom depth, the output value will be zero. At this time, there is no effect on the post-process material and the original color in the scene will keep default. Of course, we can also add a distance to control the display of X-ray, add float to set the distance, such as 1000, then subtract the custom depth. Still use saturate, which is the same as what we said. If the distance between the custom depth and the camera is greater than 1000, X-ray will not be enabled. If the distance between them is less than 1000, the effect of X-ray will be work. OK, now multiply them and connect to the alpha of lerp. Input B is the output value of the custom stencil we just created. Input A is the original color of the scene, and finally connected to emissive color, let's take a look at it again. It still has a X-ray effect, but if the distance between the camera and the character is greater than 1000, this effect will disappear. Then if we move behind the wall without occlusion, there is no X-ray effect. OK, that's it, a very simple X-ray effect. Next, we can add some additional effects to it, such as edge highlight, to make the character look more 3D. To make a edge highlight, we first need to understand its principle, that's Sobel operator. If you are interested, you can check it. According to Sobel operator we made a material function to make it easier to make edge highlight. OK, this is the material function. Simply put, it offsets the current pixel in 8 directions, then adds these offset values, 
and performs subtract processing with the original pixel to get the edge effect. We can see that there are UV and the width of the edge. This one is a pixel offset by one unit, and here is the offset output value in each direction. Use UV, add the multiplication result of the offset value and the offset distance to set the offset in eight directions. Okay, now apply this material function to the post-process material. Search for the custom depth here and connect it directly. Then add them together. Divide it by 8. Use the offset value subtract the custom depth value. Then get mask a channel, so that we get an edge highlight. Ok, we can see it in the level. First set its visible distance to 3000. Yes, a good edge highlight. Now add it with the color of the custom stencil. So we get a three-dimensional X-ray effect. Of course, if the distance is too far, we find that its width is a bit too wide. Here we can limit its width according to the distance of the custom depth. Divide by the custom depth. If the distance is too large, we will reduce its width. Of course, we need to clamp the output value here. The minimum value is set to 1 and the maximum value is set to 3. Yes, now it looks like the edge effect will be better. If we want to observe more details inside the character, we can find the custom depth of the character and change the value in the custom stencil to 1. In this way, we can observe more details inside the character. This is because we didn't use saturate to limit the output value in the custom stencil, which is convenient for us to design when we only need the edge of the outer surface. If we need more internal details, we can set the custom stencil to 1. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you like it. Bye.